All right, well then let's get started. All right, so first of all, uh, these are the two weapons you're going to be using for most of the game. I think we only changed them at like chapter six or seven or something. So that being said, let's go. So yeah, most of the first level, or well, the first chapter really, is just pretty standard platforming. So. Uh, I used to play with controller, but then I broke. So I learned keyboard, and I'm just stuck with it. Uh, ultimately, it's a little bit faster just because you have better response time when turning around and stuff. Some menuing is easier. Uh, it's definitely a lot harder to learn, though. I like I started with controller because I played on Xbox. Uh, so yeah, the first level is pretty standard. This guy's not really going to be too much of an issue. Jump up here, break these things, collect this, and then beat the level as normal. Now, if you want a bit of a harder route, it saves like a second-ish. You can go for a boost on the bottom, which is what I go for in runs. Yeah, definitely use controller. I don't recommend keyboard. Uh, you can also do this. Well, <laughs> normally you wouldn't miss that. So, you can also do that to collect the thing. And then to the next level. Yeah, I have a bit of an egg cramp at the moment, so if I'm off with anything, I'll blame that. <laughs> this level is also pretty standard. Uh, you can choose to collect that one at the beginning. I don't, I go for the one at the end. So, uh, if you want to get boosted backwards, there's um, a bit of a positioning that you want to get. So, there's the wall here that we're shooting the force ball off of. So there's one, two, three, four blocks. To get boosted, uh, like, the direction that you shot it against, obviously you want to hit it on this side. So to do that, you want to stand further than the third line on the floor away. So we shoot it, like, from this far away. You can do a double jump and it'll send you up. Say, if you shoot it just past the third line, it'll shoot you left. And uh, that's also an important thing to note, because we'll be using that a lot in this game. So, the rest of the level is pretty standard. Uh, I jump up early here to bait the cat, and that works like 99% of the time, and then you can just go under there. Uh, for this ending bit, you can choose to collect this one if you skip the one at the start. And you can do that, so I'll play the level through now. So yeah, if this goes well, I'll probably just highlight it and upload. So go before the third line, jump up to bait the cat, which didn't work, but we got it anyway. And that's pretty normal. It's only once we get to like the mid to end game that there are a lot of things to keep track of, when we have to deal with cycles and reading cycles and all that. But, uh, really, most of the early game is pretty simple, self-explanatory stuff. So this is the safe strat you can do here. You can do this to get up here. Alternatively, uh, any settings to be changed, that's also important. Uh, so... Just for streaming efficiency, I turn the enhanced background off just because it saves on bitrate. And, uh, it's easier to stream. Uh, screen resolution doesn't really matter too much. Uh, V-Sync Lock. You have to make sure that your game runs at 60 frames per second, otherwise you're going to experience horrible screen tearing. And your runs will not be valid because it will not run at 60 frames per second. If you have uh, a monitor that runs at any other uh, refresh rate than 60 frames per second, uh, make sure that you set it to 60. Uh, I have a 144Hz monitor, but I set it to 60 to run this game. Because if I don't do that, it's going to be very difficult to... Uh, force it to run at 60. Uh, you do have a 144 hertz monitor? Okay, so make sure that you set it to 60. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, so yeah, set it to 60 before you start running. Absolutely recommend that. 
Uh, so the other thing at the bottom here, you can... Well, that guy won't follow you if, if you get to here right away. So you can jump into this. And jetpacks have three uses. So you can do this. It's a little bit easier than the boost. And the fastest method, which I don't recommend going for, is doing an Omega Boost. And that's what I do in runs. It takes about a second, but it's really not worth it unless you're going for optimized times. Now the reason it's so difficult is um, because the way Omega Boosts work... Thank you for the follow, Bad Arrow. Is... It looks really cool. Yeah, it's really cool and probably one of the most satisfying things you can do in the game. Uh, so I think a jump, like the full duration of a jump is about 34 frames. The animation firing time for most weapons is like 16 frames. So if you jump and shoot this on the very next frame, uh, you'll be able to do an Omega Boost. And it's mostly a, a muscle memory thing. It's not really easy or a keyboard or controller. So it's something you could expect to get fairly consistently with enough practice. So that being said, you can come down here and I definitely recommend doing something like this. And yeah, it's just timing. Uh, running at the right side here, you should get some boosts. And you're going to grab that gem and come up to the top here. Again, pretty simple stuff. So yeah, this time I'll do a full run of the level with the jetpack. Just make sure that you jump well over these. Baiting this guy usually works. I'm surprised it didn't there, but it's not really too big of a deal. Oh, the hats can spawn. That's completely random. You can't manipulate that. However, if you do pick one up, you can press the, um, the suicide key and it will drop it. Uh, is there RNG? Yes. However, the things that are not RNG are weapon cats. So, the cats that are throwing weapons, like the dodgeball thing at the bottom, uh, it's not RNG. They're on a strict cycle that starts when you spawn into the level, and they'll keep doing that. So, those are things that you'll all be used to. Uh, the duration of lasers is completely fixed, but the period between them is random. Uh, this level is also pretty simple. If you can jump up to the top there. If the cat throws to the right, you can jump on top of it and come up here. Now, uh, there's one other thing that to keep notice that I haven't mentioned of, and that is that um, walls and clipping, like very small scale clipping. So if you look right here, if I run against this wall, you can see that my chin barely reaches that line, but if I jump into the wall, I'm actually further inside, and if I run against the wall again, uh, I get zipped out. So that's important because when you do a boost, uh, in one of these two states actually changes the trajectory of the boost, which a lot of beginners might seem, might feel as random, but it's technically not. So if I run into this wall and use a force ball before I land, I'm going to bonk. Well, <laughs> it would bonk. So you want to make sure that you actually go down, run into the ground before shooting, and then that'll guarantee you get up. This part's pretty simple too. You can just wait to get across. Make sure that you jump up here. And when you get to the end, do a jump after walking over the edge and jump and do that. And that'll make sure that you never get hit by this guy. So again, I'll do a run of the level. So I'm going to be jumping over the cat at the very start. You can do a bit of a boost there to save time. It's not really worth it though unless you're going for optimized. And that's the first three, I think. No, that's, that was level four. <laughs> I can never remember what levels are what, but obviously they're in sequence. Uh, again, pretty simple level. Jump up here. 
That's what I did there. So you want to run against the wall, try to brush up against the right side before you hit the ground, and then just tap right, and then you'll land here. Run against to the wall, and as soon as you have control, bonk, because that'll make sure that you land as soon as possible, and you can get as much running on the ice as possible. So bonk, jump from about here, where the sign is. Now, this guy is on a cycle from the start of the level, so you'll always reach the same point here if your speed is the same. So you'll be coming up here. You actually want to have your force ball equipped at this time, and then you can shoot against the wall and get boosted along the ice. So you do this, and you can jump to this. Uh, that's pretty easy. You might have to practice it a couple times just to get the jump right. Uh, but yeah. Oh, and now that I think of it, there's another small piece of movement that's pretty important to know. It's that if you do a single jump and do an attack, you'll preserve the same horizontal speed. But if you do two jumps, your horizontal speed will be much slower. So if you're doing a long jump and you think you'll just about reach the edge of it, only do it if you just reach the very edge. Otherwise, it's not worth it and it'll probably cost you the jump. And if you jump off of a ledge before doing a single jump, you'll keep it. However, if you do this and then jump a single time, you do not get your second jump back. The more pretty simple things. Yeah, it's all stuff that it's kind of, it would take you a little bit to learn at the start, but then it just becomes pretty simple. So we'll do a full run of the level. Oh, give me a sec, somebody's at home. Okay, sorry about that. Might have to go, uh, like, leave again for a few minutes, but it should be okay. Uh, yeah, so, jump up here. Oh yeah, and you need the gem under the boat. Oh, nice. So this run I'm going to do a bit of a more advanced strat at the very top of the level that um, uses the same timing as an Omega Boost, but you're using a frog instead. So another piece of movement that's pretty standard is um, called a frog walk, and it's throwing a frog and landing on top of it. Uh, this is also frame perfect, so you jump and then throw the frog right after, and if you're high enough, you'll land on it and walk on it. So it's also pretty... That's a lot of emotes. <laughs> So the thing that I would do here is actually do a frog walk here, slide under and do a single jump. And it's also pretty consistent with practice. Yeah, and that's another nice thing about this game is that a lot of different things use the same muscle memory. so it's very easy to become good at one thing that'll help everything else. Uh, this level, you can do this skip two ways. Yeah, you can single jump that and it's a lot easier. A single jump is like a block and a half. So for this boat skip, you do the first jump to break the block, you do a second set of double jumps to line yourself up with the left wall because that's necessary for an Omega boost. And then you can actually jump up and do the boost. 
An alternative method that's the exact same speed would be switching to frog, jumping on the very left side of this cloud, and holding it and using that to get up. Uh, some people find that easier, but it's very important to make sure that you hold left after you throw the frog, otherwise you'll bonk on it, and I'll show what that looks like. Obviously you don't want that to happen. So both of those ways work, they're both the same speed. Now there are a few different ways you can do this. You can jump up to this way, or you can do this. Uh, the jump's a little bit more precise, but it's a little bit faster, so either of these don't really matter. Just do whatever you're comfortable with. So by the time we get here, you'll have just used the force ball, and you want to switch to frog. So that when you get here, you can use that and just walk across. Again, okay, pretty simple. And for this part, stand here or on the edge of the cloud. And jump up. Which is, again, pretty easy. So I'll do that level in total. A little bit more. But again, it's pretty simple. In execution, anyway. Oh, that slide on the exit when you can. It saves like a frame or two. Oh, you used to throw a boomerang? It's weird. So this level is actually the first secret exit in the game. So the main category, which is called no level skips, you'd think that you wouldn't be able to skip anything. Uh, but what we're actually aiming for is to get a, a letter grade in all of the main levels. And the secret exit actually counts as an exit. So if I were to jump on this without having beaten the level before, an exit out of this. If you look at the floor under here, it says A++. That's because I've beaten the level before. But if I were to have done that on a new file, it would say C, uh, which counts as a level completion. Oh, really, anime? Anyway, that's cool. So yeah, just to show it again, boost in the corner, jump up, and get on the exit. Then as soon as you're in here, you can just pause the menu out. Now for this one, this is probably the first difficult level in Chapter 1. So you want to switch to frog and then enter. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that strat, it's really dumb. So, there's a cat at the beginning that can shoot the boomerang either left or right. Now there's a consistent way to get under this every time, but it requires you to do it right away. So I'm going to run to the edge of the water, jump, and then throw the frog. This will make sure that I have enough room to get under it. Oh, nice. Uh, the reason that you have to jump is that sometimes frogs take weird trajectories, and if I were to throw it to here, it would actually turn around. So that's why you need to jump. Now, obviously that wouldn't happen if it was, was like just reset. Yeah, sure. So jump over all this. And make sure you go down here and grab this. Now for this part. Uh, boosts in this game are really OP with force falls. So if this laser is off, you can boost all the way up here. Now, if you don't want to risk going for that, if you can't see the laser, you can just jump up, which is not that much slower. Then you can just run over here and go to that checkpoint. Alternatively, if you see this crack in the floor under where I am and shoot a force ball, you can get shot all the way over. That only saves like a second, so I don't really recommend going for that right away either. And this part's just avoiding all the lasers. and then just finish the level. So we'll do that one again. Uh, 
making sure to because I would be coming into the level with the frog. Nothing too bad if you practice. So the next level is the main, um, the last normal level of chapter one. Sometimes you can beat this laser, but it's random. Yeah, there's not too much to say about the beginning of this. Now, there's a bit of a skip you can do there. Uh, but you have to make sure that you don't touch the floor first. Not too hard, but it could be a little bit tricky if you're not used to the game yet. You can also go into the corner here and use a horse ball, uh, which is not that much slower, and it's completely easy. <laughs> yeah. So get down here. Up here. And then you get to do a really interesting thing you can do at the end of the level. Which looks amazing and it's very easy. So, in this corner here, there's all ice on the floor. So if you go down here, you can boost all the way up to the exit. And the cats will literally never hit you. Assuming that you did the, um, that you avoided their trigger zone. Yeah, it's really convenient. Now, there's a small boost that you can do here if you jump onto the first one. Well, now I have to wait. <laughs> so this is also pretty simple. So you jump up here, keep holding left, and then boost when you land, and you can get up to the top. So show it again, run up here, keep holding left, boost when you land. Now there's another trickier boost that I go for that I don't really recommend, but you can boost off this as well. And well, <laughs> you get the idea, you can do that too. You can also skip the boat in the middle of the level, but <laughs> I'm not even going to bother showing that off because it's way too difficult and isn't really worth it. And we're on to the finales! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there is. No. There's a, a pretty simple thing that you have to remember for this ice at the very top. Uh, naturally, you want to jump up and keep holding right, but look at how far that gets you. Like, it's only to here. That's bad, we want to go further. So if you hold left before jumping onto this, uh, you'll actually have more time to run on the ice and get shot way further. And that also uh, preserves your momentum better. So that if you hold left, you can actually make it all the way to the boat. Now there's a faster strat for the beginning that you can do here that I'll show off now. So there's a bit of a faster strat that you can do if you switch to frog. And it's the same as the one on um, one of the earlier levels, I can't remember which. And you can slide under that. If you do that, you don't even have to get the boat. Uh, so I think most runners do that at this point. By the way, lol. So there is an optimal way to do this platforming section. So 
So jump to the first block and make sure that you do max height jumps all three times. That way it'll make sure that you have as little time in there as possible. And it's also safe from hitting any of the lasers. Oh, nice Nanmu. And when you get to this part, you can switch the frog, jump up, throw one, and then you'll always make it across. And then you can just run to the exit. So I'll do that again. But this time I'm going to go for the, um, the frog skip at the very beginning. Not too complicated. Uh, this level, I don't think there's too much to it. There's just a lot of lasers that you have to make sure you don't really get hit. Oh, for this part, you can actually jump right from this block. Now on this part here, you want to make sure that you do a slide, and then jump. Doing a slide saves a few frames, it makes it more likely that you'll reach this. Now, when you have single spike blocks and you run against them, and do a single jump, you'll actually always clip the other side of it. It's not really necessary to do here, but it's good to know. And jump from the edge of this so that you run along the full length of the conveyor, and then just do a jump up to the end. So I'll do that one again, and that's pretty much it for chapter one. Again, there's not really too much to explain. Yeah, this level's pretty simple. Yeah, and there you go. Uh, so did you want me to do a full run of the chapter with those strats? Or just move on to chapter two? I mean, you only really died You sure know how to make greedy. the best of a confusing and hopeless situation, but boy, this place is quite the enigma. Okay, cool. It's chapter 2. So we start getting into a few more gameplay elements, but um... Yeah, I think these things at the beginning are new. So these guys here, they're called Ferdinands. We call them Fuzzy Bears just because that's what we've nicknamed them. And uh, these are always on the same cycle. So when you spawn into a level, they'll always be in exactly the same position. You can trust them. Uh, no, you do not start on a fresh file. Uh, we've decided that just because it's way too hard to reset the file in this game. That, and you always have all the weapons anyway, so there's not really too much of a point to make a new file. Uh, yeah, you need weapons, and if you start from a new file, you actually get to play an extra chapter called the Prologue, and you can only access that from a new file, so... If you could access it normally, we probably would do it. Uh, but there's no way to access it other than resetting everything. So, it's both faster and more convenient. So for this part, you can land on this and make it all the way up here. So you jump from here, that's about the cycle you get. You'll make it up. And if you remember that thing we were talking about earlier, about the third line from a block. Uh... I don't think so. I could probably upload one. I don't know how that works. 
you do your best up here. Optimally, you'll want to get as close as possible, but obviously that's a little bit more difficult. So you can still jump from back here and be fine. You'll just get chopped to the right. Jump over the toast. By the way, little known fact about this game is that these guys have a toast squishing animation, which is pretty great. The direction this portal sends you is random. Sometimes you get bumped into the wall. And for down thing, just do a single jump. Or wait, no. Uh, jump up here. And then to the end. So I'll do it again. Thank you, Xivuzo. How's it going? Oh, nice. Uh, pretty good, thanks. Now, this is another secret exit, so we'll be trying to get to the secret as fast as possible, then leaving the screws. Now, there's a bit of a skip you can do here. Normally, you'd be expected to jump up, but there's a way to interrupt that. If you shoot to the right here, then jump on, you'll actually get bumped to the left. So, that's very easy to do. Uh, for this part, a lot of people get stuck up in the top part without being able to get down, but there is a consistent way to do it. So jump pretty much as light as possible. So like, try to jump when your floor, when your foot lines up with this part in the floor. Keep holding left. And then you'll get through. No, oh, you can also do a slide on this, but it's frame perfect. Yeah, I don't recommend going for that. Uh, so do a single jump, then do a single attack, and then you'll always make it through. So the secret exit is up here. You can jump to it, but um, if you miss, just stand down here and you'll be fine. IL strats. Yeah, that one's not too complicated either. So, here we have some ice in a quarter. What does that mean? Well, more boosts, of course. So, there's one thing to keep in note about this boost is that sometimes you'll keep the ice physics after you land, and that uh, boils down to what your hitbox position is. So, if you want to be consistent, run down and then boost, and then you'll make it over here. So more boost up here, go down here, and then keep holding right the whole time. And then you'll make it across. Now for this cat at the end, um, if you run along the top of him, you'll pretty much always be able to do the skip right here. So obviously if you could find a way to hit this block right here, it would be fastest. So if you jump pretty much right after you leave this block, you'll be able to reach it. So the goal for this is to jump as early as possible without bonking. Which honestly isn't too bad. You have a few frames to make that first jump.
<laughs> yeah, it's something that like you'll mess up every once in a while just because you're not paying attention. This level is pretty simple, but there are a lot of small things you can do to speed it up. Oh, about in general. Yeah, that makes sense. So, if you remember that thing about hitboxes again, is that if you jump and shoot it before you land, you'll bonk on the edge there. So I'm not used to doing this wrong, <laughs> but I'll just like try to show it off if I can do it. Well, apparently I can't do it bad, but apparently, like, if you do this too early, you'll bonk on this here, so. Again, pretty simple stuff. Make sure that you don't get hit by the lasers. This boomerang can sometimes be annoying. Okay, for this part at the end, there is a laser up top, which normally you'd have to wait for. But if you take this up to the top, you can actually block it. And that makes the end very consistent. So I'll do that one again. Smart. Uh, no. I don't think it is. You can do two, but not the whole thing. My jump didn't work. Awesome. So yeah, you can block that even if it's turned on. So... I'm going to play through this one last time to point out some more difficult optimizations you can go for. So there is actually a way to skip this at the very start, but you have to be very fast for it to be worth it. And then you can just barely make this cycle. Also... Oh nice! Thanks Slippy! How's it going? So if your timing is right and you're lucky, you can also boost against this laser. Most of the time you pick up the gem, but like if you skip it, it loses time, so it's really not something worth going for unless you're going for really optimized runs. So, there you go. End of that level. Yeah, it's pretty fun to do fast. Saves like three or four seconds. Uh, so these are the worst thing in the game. They're random movement blocks. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you get through this beginning part as fast as possible. Otherwise, they just go everywhere and it's a big mess. So we're going to jump to the left, shoot pretty much as early as possible, and then go over the top. So keep note of the cannon up there and then boost them in the corner. And you can ride these things across. Now, another thing that we'll be doing a few times is uh, using a force ball to break bricks. Yeah, this is a slow walks live. So you can do this. Oh, another thing important uh, is to make sure that for this, you actually let go of running before you shoot. Uh, because when you use a weapon, you actually have one more frame of input after you shoot it. So if I shoot and move on the, fra on the same frame, I'll move forward a frame. So if I shoot on the very last frame of this, I'll actually fall into the water. Eventually. So you don't want that to happen, so stop running before you shoot it and you'll be okay. I recommend that you take the checkpoint. Sometimes these can be in a bad position. 
So we'll do it again. So taking note of the cannon. Letting go of left. Grabbing the checkpoint and switching to frog. Because if you get a frog at the end, you can actually make this cycle. I mean, if I was going fast, I would have been able to, but it's not something you really need to worry about. Tip. Uh, is the frog not possible in the previous? No, it's not. Uh, plus it's slower, even if you did try to use it. Can you jump out of the cannon path if you can pause buffer? Uh, what do you mean? I'll go back and look. Oh, you mean like um, if you use a boost? Uh, no, you don't have control yet. So like say or to boost early, and like it were going to kill me. I only get control like here, so it's too late to actually avoid it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That and you usually have to wait for the laser anyway, so it's not a big time loss if you have to wait. So this level has a really quick cycle at the very end if you play optimally. A lot of this is just standard, don't get hit by lasers. Okay, one thing that's important to know about portals is that if you double jump into them, you'll get your double jump back. But if you do a single jump and then swipe into them, you actually don't get a double jump back. So never, ever do this into a portal, or you're pretty much guaranteed dead. So just single or double jump in. Because if that happens in a few places, you can pretty much soft block. And the ending's pretty simple. Just get up to the end. So, there's a really quick cycle that you can do if you do everything well and get good lasers, which is usually what happens in runs. But it's a little bit tricky, so don't worry about it if you can't do this. So we're trying to get a 21 checkpoint at the very end. 21 or a 22. So we just barely missed it. I'm gonna do it another time just to um, try to get it on video. Okay, that blade is better. We should get it this time. So jump in the middle, shoot, and then do a single jump. And then you can get us to the end. Now obviously if you can play at the level well, you want to go for that. Because it saves like 5 or 6 seconds, it's very significant. Yeah, sometimes it's not possible, but most of the time it is. Uh, so you want to boost at the start. Sometimes this laser will kill you. And there's nothing you can do about it, so if that happens, just boost the corner again. And here we'll abuse the physics again to get up to the top. So you'll get pretty much to the edge, and then shoot 
just before you land. And that'll send you up here. Now if you remember earlier, uh, if you do a single jump it preserves your momentum. So if we get a sideways boost after having done a single jump, we'll get the best boost here. If we walk off and do it once, uh, it won't be as good. We'll only go to like here. And if you were to double jump on, like it's the same thing. It doesn't really work as well. So you want to just single jump onto that. Uh, don't get hit by the cannons. Make sure that you pick up both of those gems. So now we're at the helicopter house, which is a new thing. Uh, a lot of people find this very unintuitive, but um, you have two uses. And then it expires. So the way this works is, is that um, it preserves the speed at which you used it the first time and then accelerates it. So if I do a single jump and then use it very quickly, uh, it'll keep the speed that I was going at when I used it. So if I do a low jump and then use it, it'll accelerate from whatever point I was going at. So if you want to do a single jump and then use it quickly again, and then you can get to the top of the one you just left. Yeah, this ending can be pretty annoying sometimes, and there's not really much you can do about it. So if you get here with the second jetpack, you can use it against... <laughs> this is what can happen. So you jump against the wall and then shoot. And then you can get up to the top. So just to show the whole thing. Uh, but yeah, that level's one that you can pretty easily expect to lose like five or six seconds on. As you can see. Yeah, it's a great level. <laughs> Except not. <laughs> uh, this level is again, not too much to say. Sometimes you can beat this cycle at the start. Most of the time you can't. Yeah, that's RNG. So if you hold left and then hold right, you'll land here. No need to jump. And then you can jump over this. Make sure that you grab that gem though. Yeah, it is. So go down here, make sure that you don't get fried. And just more RNG at the end. And here, we use this again to save a lot of time. Like, look at how long this thing is. Who wants to wait for this? So we don't. So, again, there's not too much. Just don't get beamed by RNG. Don't be greedy. It'll be okay. Oh, nice ahead. Uh, only like once or twice. Uh, the longer you're in a level, the higher of a chance they have to spawn. So, that's probably why I've gotten so many. Nope. <laughs> okay, never mind. Apparently I'm just getting a lot today. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can actually kill this guy from here. Uh, if you remember about the Omega Boost timing. If you jump, but uh, instead of using a weapon the frame after you use uh, the attack, you can kill this guy from here. 
And when you're holding one of these, you have an extended hitbox, so you can hold this and then jump, and you'll collect the gem. Oh, yeah, you can also clip through this wall. <laughs> but don't do that. <laughs> Why not? Hmm. So yeah, another thing is that this will always be in the same cycle. So assuming that you know where you are in the cycle, you can do a boost here. And that's also consistent. Yeah, soft luck. <laughs> so push this out. If you see there's a portal in the ceiling that you can go to, make sure that you grab this gem. Now, there's a bit of a tricky boost that we do here, except it's not really too hard if you know what you're doing. So stand pretty far back, shoot, do a single jump, and then jump into it a second time. So jump and jump again. If you get hit by knockback when you're traveling up, you'll always get a shot to the left. Or well, boost it up anyways. Yeah, I'll do that one from the start. It's kind of hard to explain stuff while you're doing it. So I think I'll make this cycle. If I remember right. Yeah. And you can boost in the corner. And you can just walk off. Oh no, the hat! <laughs> Yeah, you could also pause after you boost, but, um, yeah. And finale! Real time or game time? Uh, we go RTA. So there's another new mechanic that we'll be doing at the very start of this level. Uh, it's not a spike jump, those are bad. Uh, so normally you'd run over here and do this, so you can just get up here normally. But we want to be fast, and that's dumb. So when you spawn into a level you have like a second and a half of the vulnerability. So we're going to be using that to actually jump on top of the spikes. Uh, we do this twice in the game. So as soon as you spawn in, do a really fast double jump, and you can get up here. So, I'll jump up on here and wait just to show you how much time you have. But it's quite lenient if you can do a jump quickly. So you have to be pretty quick. But yeah, not too hard with practice. There are a couple ways you can do this bit. Neither is really too much faster. So you can jump on the bottom cloud, then go up here. Or you can fall in the water and die. Third option is actually jumping on top of this to make it up. If you miss it, it's lost time though, yeah. I suppose I can show you the other thing. So you can also use a frog, which is what some people do. So you, say you spawn into the level of the frog, you can also throw that. Which is super easy. Like if you're not confident enough to do that, just do this. It's pretty much the same speed. Now, we can make it through this if we do this with a single jump, because that slows your speed of descent. And if you do this, you can bonk into the ceiling there for a little bit of a speed boost. Just jump over these guys. Now there are two different ways you can do the sending. Uh, the first one involves running over here, doing this, and uh, jumping up to the exit as intended. Uh, but there's a faster way that you can do it that involves a boost. So again, if you remember, if we shoot just outside of the third line, we'll get boosted this way. So if we do this and jump outside, we can get up to the top. 
Now that's pretty difficult uh, compared to everything else that we've done so far. So if you want to do that, make sure that you're practiced. If you stand too close, you'll get knocked back, like shot into the laser or something. So just before the third line, and we step to the exit. Now this level has a really fun strat that you can do. And I think I'll just do it first and explain everything afterwards. Yeah, this is the Finale 2 clip. This is the first, like, major clip in the game. Which is really fun to do. So I'll do it first and explain afterwards. If I can do it properly. <laughs> I gotta focus. That's the Finale 2 clip. Now there are a lot of things going on. <laughs> so, you want to slide onto this at the very start, make sure that you reach this cycle, then switch the weapon as soon as possible, and then shoot as soon as you land. You catch all that? And then slide backwards into the wall and boost. Yeah, it's actually way easier than it looks. So, get up here. Now, if you need to practice the timing, uh, like at the beginning, you can do a different movement, but that's the fastest way. So, I think I have proc. Yeah, okay, so. I'd like to get up there, please. Okay, so here we are. So you want to shoot as soon as you land on the ice? It's really hard to explain when we're going slowly. So, get to here, these boots. Ah! <laughs> I'm just gonna restart. Like, everything happens so fast. So, when you get onto this ice right here, if you move backwards, you'll still move backwards. So, the thing at play here is, you want to walk onto this ice and turn around and jump. Because then you'll slide into the wall. Uh, the being this close to the wall is necessary for the clip to work. So, uh, after you do the boost on the bottom right part there, uh, you'll want to spam the weapon switch button. So that when you get to the top, does my mouse show on screen? Yeah, it does. Okay. So when you get to this part right here, you want to throw the frog so that you'll get shot over here and it'll drop down somewhere down here. So after you do that, you want to run over to the right here and do the reverse jump. And then you want to shoot as soon as it walks over the edge. Make sure that you don't move. Right now, you'll see that I'm not bouncing around. But if I jump or do anything, I'll be stuck and then the clip won't work. So you want to get down here, jump into the wall, and don't do any movement at all until the clip is done. So you shoot, and then shoot again and hold right. And that'll get you down to the bottom every time. Uh, is there any part of that you, that you don't understand? Now it looks quote unquote simple. Okay, cool. Uh, so I guess we'll continue. If you have any more questions, yeah, it's just a matter of getting the timing right. You can jump onto that, walk up to the end, and just don't get killed by the cannons. It's pretty much just a walk to the finish. And that's chapter two. Just the name that we've used since, like, the game came out. 
Way to bite the bullet so no far. Reason, no. You don't even complain about the prison food, which is shocking because that stuff tastes like doo doo casserole with a side of butt salad. But best of all, this game has great cutscenes. So, do you think that's good enough for today? Or um, should I get started on chapter three? Like, that's probably a few hours worth of. Just learning stuff. <laughs> Kicking the cut, CB. Okay. Just try to start tomorrow? Okay. I think I'll just do a quick run through of um, chapter one and two, just to sort of wrap everything together, and then I'll go to a different game. I'll be doing easy strats. Yeah, no problem. It's it's kind of good to have an excuse to finally do a sort of tutorial thing. Uh, I'm not sure. There are a few different things to play. Easy strats. If I hit by that, it's not really a big deal. <laughs> uh, well, look at console. You only have one weapon slot there. I mean, most of the run is force fall and um, frog anyway. Pull up my library just to see what we could play. I have like literally eight different games that I haven't played yet. Yeah. Uh, is the Omega Boost that precise? Uh, it's frame perfect and you have to be flush against the wall, but other than that, not really. <laughs> yeah, it's not like a frame perfect jump or something that relies on the layout of the level. It's just two inputs that you have to do really close to each other. Like platforming frame perfect jumps and stuff, you can never really get 100% consistent. This you pretty much can. I'm just doing easy strats. Just for the sake of the video. It pretty much is.
Yeah, and it's not like too bad. Like it's pretty lenient what position you need to be in. Yeah, I guess. Okay, just because you've asked so many times, I will show off both lists, or at least try to. I'm not even gonna bother explaining it though. So don't do what I'm about to try. <laughs> Never, ever, ever try that in a run. Thank you for the bits, Ixivazio. No, it's just insanely hard. Hand <laughs> move, please. Like, I don't go for that in runs because it's too hard. Yeah, a good goal for chapter 1 is just sub 8. That's the only chapter that we really have, I guess, a goal for. You think? I don't know, maybe. And like sub 820 then. Something around there. You sure know how to make the best of a confusing and hopeless situation, but boy, this place is quite the Oh, no kidding. Nice. <laughs> nice. I think 
I shot that too late or something. What? There's no way it took you six months to get sub eight. What? How does the level skip work? Uh, for the secret? Uh... So, whenever you land on an exit, uh, I have to go back a step. When you collect three gems, an exit opens, and when you go, oh. You just navigate to the pause menu. Yes, this is no level skips. And the goal of no level skips is to get a letter grade on each of the nine X and two finales of all eight chapters. Uh, the secrets don't count, so. What's the counterpart? Okay, so if you want to strip down the goal of this category to the very simplest, uh, your goal is to get this silver trophy right here. And to get this, you only need to complete... Oh, any percent. Ah. So <laughs> any percent is the stupidest category. <laughs> like, there's a reason nobody takes it seriously, it's because it's dumb. But um, in a new, in like a new game file, you can exit out of the first two scenes of each act to unlock the third act, or to unlock the third scene. Then you need to play that third scene to, in order to unlock the next group of acts. So you can skip six levels per chapter this way, but you have to actually enter the chap like the level, then exit it each time. So like 80% of the run is just menuing, and it's really stupid and dumb, and don't ever run it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, I did two runs of it ever, and then just never touched it again. Yeah, Storm's pretty good. He's pretty good at everything, to be honest. See, <laughs> here's where the locks can be annoying. I'm gonna try for the uh, the fast cycle. That's my memory for the frog. Yep. <laughs> I don't know for act. Yeah, we're not gonna make it. Nothing we could really do that time.
Hopefully we don't get killed right away. Okay, we're fine. So that time I kind of waited uh, until pretty much the end of their attacking cycle so that the odds of an ice still being there was low. Sometimes it's faster to wait like that. Hey, thanks Meteor Cow. How's it going? Fun fact, dude, this guy. <laughs> dude, I love going really slow to save time. I'll show off Animu's pause buffer thing. So if you boost here and you have no idea what the cycle is, you can buff for holding a direction. Unless you're like literally right on top of the poison bubble, that usually works. Uh, on the fifth. That was me. <laughs> I think I'm the only... Well, I used to be the only person who did pause buffers before I really figured out cycles and stuff. <laughs> Mibs used to meme about it. Oh, because you mentioned it earlier. Hey, nice. But was it deathless, Kappa? So getting ready for the flip. No, <laughs> only one person's ever done it, and it took like 60 hours of running. I was looking to chat. Yeah, that's the first two chapters with pretty much all easy strats. If you want to see harder strats, just like check out my PB or something. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I might highlight that and just upload it to 